stories that matter. The journey of life from birth to death is an extraordinary trip, sometimes filled with great joy and excitement, but at other times filled with pain, sorrow, and disappointment. Stories That Matter shares both extremes with you. Sometimes our stories will make you feel very happy, but the journey of life is not all happiness. Other times, the journey of life will make you feel sad, for all of us have experienced both extremes. Stories That Matter will begin right after the break with a story that will touch your heart in the journey of life. Welcome to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson. My special guest is Deshaun Fogel. And Deshaun, we got quite a story because uh, you went to high school here in Chapman and uh, then you went all over the world. Yes, sir. And then you worked your way on back to Chapman. Correct. But there was a whole bunch of things. So if we said Deshaun at Chapman and Deshaun at Chapman, there's a gap of time, but there's a <laughs> lot of things that took place in, in, yes, in between. Sir. And I appreciate you being here. Thank I know you, you got duties at the school and I know you're a coach. But let's begin with first, how did you wind up going to school in Chapman? Uh, well, grew up uh, grew up a military brat. Father was in the army, and um, we had just uh, gotten stationed here at Fort Riley. Uh, I was in the, the beginning of my junior year, and um, we were uh, trying to find a place to live, and we we're able to to find a home um, on Milford Lake Road here, not too far from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was five miles from Chapman and five miles from Junction City. And uh, one thing kind of made the decision for us. Well, I didn't drive at the time. Um, so we knew the buses from Chapman drove out there and picked up picked up kids, um, and the buses from Junction didn't drive out there and pick up kids. So my dad's like, I'm not driving you to school, so you need to either take the bus or you're walking. So it was pretty easy. I was like, well, I guess I'm going to Chapman. That'll be fine. I'll, I'll just ride the bus, and, and everything seemed to work out. So What year was that? That was, uh, got here in 1991. So in 91, so... Uh, you didn't know this at the time, but the Chapman recruiting program for football players, depending on the time of the year, they would send those feeder buses out to the outside <laughs> the area to pick, <laughs> pick up kids. So that's how you wound up over here. That's correct. And, I, and uh, up on screen here in just a second, we'll show you this. But boy, there's a, there's a skinny guy up here in this picture up here. Got the move. Got, got the little the Heisman, Heisman move going. Yeah, that, that, was, that was 17 years old in that photo, believe it or not. And um, yeah, well, that was kind of the... Uh, that was kind of the thing going on during that time. Everybody wanted to strike the Heisman pose. So uh, got a couple guys dared me to do it. I was like, guess what? I'm doing it. So I, that's on my senior football photo, yeah. Well, that's a good one. You weighed about what? Then? I was probably about 200 and 205 pounds. Well, yeah, you were pretty tall then. Yeah. Um, or still are, but about the same. Yeah, six two, two hundred five. Yeah, yeah two hundred eight, somewhere in there. Were you a running back for high school? I was a running back. Running back and played uh, defensive end and linebacker. Um, throughout my high school years, uh, really focused on the running back part when I got here, um, and uh, which is interesting where I wound up playing in college. But yeah, I was uh, the primary running back here while I was here. Had you been uh, playing football before uh, Chapman? I did, actually. This was my, my actual third year of organized football, believe it or not. I really didn't start playing um, organized football until I was a freshman in high school. Um, I was always too big as a, a little kid for the, the youth leagues that were on the uh, – the installations we were at, so I was like, okay, I'll just wait. What, the other parents said, no, no? They were, I was just, you know, everybody's got a weight limit, and I was always that bigger kid, oh. um, so I just couldn't, I couldn't play. So the, not until my freshman year in high school I was able to, to play. Yeah, uh, that's awesome, and, and uh, of course, I know Chapman had success during that period of time. Ultimately, with your, uh, after you finished high school, of course, graduated from Chapman, and then you um, uh, got to go to college to play football, too. Yes, sir. Where'd you go? I went to Kansas State University. Um, was lucky enough uh, that somebody thought I had the ability to play uh, college football. Um, and uh, I, as soon as the, the, the scholarship was offered, I jumped on it. Um, I took a visit there and, and really liked the, the, you know, they talk about family now, but it was really the same back then as well. Really liked the atmosphere. Um, I was already living in Manhattan at that point. And um, it just seemed like an easy transition, probably the, uh, the best transition for me. So, so yeah, it was it was it was a great it was a great time. Got to play with some uh, extraordinary players, um, some really good Hall of Fame type athletes come out of that program, um, Hall of Fame type coaches in that program as well. So, who were some of the um, athletes that you played with? I, I know there would be lots of them, but that would have some name recognition. Chad May, sure. Uh, my first two years, probably one of the best quarterbacks they, in the in the country at that time. Um, 
you know, you're looking at Purcell Gaskins, who uh, was an All-American high jumper, um, played linebacker for us. Um, I, I don't know if you, if you follow college football, but I played behind Kirby Hillcutt, who's in, who's in charge of the college football uh, playoff committee. So that's, it, it's, it's funny how that, how that stuff plays out. Um, Mark Semino, who's everybody knows that name here in the state of Kansas. Sure. Um, he was Went a, on to play for the was, Chiefs. He was a freshman it? when I was a senior, so he was a baby. But, you know, you can kind of see uh, the type of people that come through that program and just the work ethic and those type of things and what they are able to turn into. Um, it's, it's incredible. So. And with Coach Snyder, of course, he, uh, he requires a certain discipline, not only in your work ethic, but um, in your behavior with the rest of the community, too. Oh, of course. Um, and, and, that, and that's something that un until you've been through it and you get a little older, you actually really appreciate. Um, at the time when you're uh, 18, 19, 20 years old, it's, it's, it's hard because you, yeah. you want to go out and you want to do things. You want to have fun. You want to do those things. But the responsibilities he was, he was trying to teach us at that, at that time um, was really teaching us how to be uh, turning to, to men and adults and responsible adults and those type of things. And, you know, lucky for me, um, you know, growing up in a military family, my, you know, I had some strict rules and regulations and things I had to follow. Um, so I was kind of used to, used to that. Um, but, you know, I had my moments. I was a kid. I was growing up. I was trying to, to mature into an adult. But, you know, until you're out of it and you look back, you really don't understand what he was trying to do. But um, it, it worked out. And uh, speaking of rules, I have some in my producer signaling me that we need to cut the break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Deshaun Fogel. And Deshaun, we were visiting about how you wound up going to high school in Chapman. And from there, you went on to uh, the Kansas State, uh, to the uh, Wildcats, to play football. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, you went there to be a student, but you, you also played football and you wound up uh, a linebacker. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, you went there all four years? Yes, sir. And so the four years, when did you become um, a starter? Um, I became a starter uh, my junior year, um, which was exciting. Like I said, I, I played behind some very good players. Um, but at that, you know, my junior year was, I, was about my time. I, I knew the system pretty well and, and um, um, my coaches had the belief in me that I could go out there and make plays, and and uh, so I was, they were like, "You're your next guy up." So I was like, "Okay." And it was it helped. What helped out was I was able to play um, off and on my freshman and, and sophomore years, and um, you know, I actually started a game my sophomore year, which was pretty nice. Um, so I, I had been on the field uh, quite a bit, and it wasn't it wasn't a big of a that big of a transition for me. So. And of course, K State known for uh, developing uh, linebackers, and that's what you were. So you went through that program, uh, and then after college, what takes place? Well, um, uh, same thing with high school and, and that transition to college. I guess somebody thought I was I was a good enough athlete and contributor. I was actually offered an opportunity to play um, uh, in the National Football League. I spent. Uh, as a free agent, went in as a free agent with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, so I spent a season with them. Um, you made the cut to get to the final 50, or the kick carried 53 at the time? Actually, I was, uh, what they have, they have a practice squad, mm -hmm. and then there's like an extra four guys they carry around, and, and in, in the event of an injury or something like that, they move guys up. So I spent uh, the season moving up and down, um, finished the year on the 53-man roster, uh, which was exciting. Yeah. Um, played... Uh, Played in some games, uh, Baltimore and the old stadium before they re, uh, they moved and built, rebuilt the, the new stadium for them, uh, the new FedEx field, and they had just built that for Washington Redskins. That was my last game, actually. So um, experience played in the, the Georgia Dome against the Falcons. I mean, it was it was incredible, you know, because it, it's you look at you're looking across the field and there are guys you've watched on television. There's the Emmett Smiths and. You know, at the time, the Emmett Smiths and the Brett Favre's and those guys, and you're like, that's Brett Favre right there. And everybody's looking at you like, okay, we got a game to play. And you're like, okay, there's Steve Young. And you just make sure you're pointing out, you know, all those people. So yeah. So when you knocked Brett Favre down, did you, all day long, buddy, all day I'm coming at you. <laughs> I wish that was the case. Um, but, you know, just an exciting um, experience. And then, you know, like we had talked about beforehand, you really learn about, um, that's when, Sports really becomes becomes a business, and you really learn about um, what it takes. Because now you're now it's a job, and you know you're you're competing against guys who don't want to lose their jobs. So um, you really grow up really really fast. So yeah, yeah, and I bet the um, 
uh, all of the programs in there. So if we take the concept, you come into high school and uh, you're, you have the physical abilities to play high school, of course, immediately. You go into college, now, the, now there's good athletes mm -hmm. there. And so part of it is fitting into that organization, the structure, knowing what to do uh, as the plays are called and so forth, the, the defensive signals are called. And then and now you move into the pro level with the, uh, it was the Eagles, wasn't Eagles, it? Correct. So you go in with the Eagles and now it's everybody's looking at you because they're saying, my job might be on the line. That's correct. And, and that's the way that it is. It's the best players are going to play there. And so you do that for a while, then what happens? Well, um, got, got waived and, and that was okay. And, and at the time I was, I was engaged to be married to, uh, to my wife, my wife now, who was getting ready to become active duty Air Force. Um, so she was getting ready to do her training out in California. And, you know, I'm trying to weigh the pros and cons with my agent and, and figure out what do I want to continue trying to play or do I want to go follow my wife, get married? Because, you know, the odds of us being together with me still playing and her being in, in the military probably wasn't going to work out. So I, I made the choice to, to walk away from football and go go get married with my wife. Um, so we spent some time out in California as she trained to get ready for the military. And uh, after about six months out there, we got our first duty assignment. I say we, because we are now a couple. Sure. <laughs> got our first duty assignment out in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. So, yeah. And you and your wife have kids? We do, got two, 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 good, two good kids. Um, we got a 12 year old daughter and a seven year old son. And, uh, they keep me keep me busy. So. Uh, I bet they do. They keep me busy. I bet they do. So then, uh, then what? She's in the military, and so now what occurs? Well, um, I graduated with my business degree. Um, and Where, where'd you graduate from? Graduated from Kansas State, my awesome. business degree. And um, so at the time, I'm like, well, what do I do? She, she's starting her military career. Um, what's available? Uh, looking through the ads on, on in the newspaper and it really wasn't the internet back then which is pretty interesting so i'm looking through through the newspaper for ads and found out the city of cheyenne um and their parks and recreation department were looking for uh what they called the sports programmer somebody to uh run the youth and and adult leagues in the, in the city um so i applied for that it helped that I had an athletic background she was uh, stationed there yep she was stationed in wyoming um and uh Went and applied for that position and helped that I had a, like I said, an athletic background, um, which really made the, the transition into that job was really easy. It's like, well, yeah, I, I've, I've coached little kids. I've, I've uh, been in athletics all my life. So I, I think I can do this job and was hap uh, lucky enough to get that position as well. So spent three and a half years doing that, um, working for the city of Cheyenne, uh, awesome people, awesome town, really loved it. Um, but I, I kept always going back to something. Um, you know, growing up in the military, my wife's active duty now, so I'd always been around the military. Um, and I was thinking I needed to do something more. I really wanted to do something more. So um, well, one day I walked into my, my boss and I said, here's my two weeks notice. And he's like, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, I think I'm going to join the Air Force. Okay, you sure you want? Yes, I think I want to do this. Um, so um, like we discussed, went ahead and because uh, I was eligible, uh, I had a college degree, I, I was eligible to apply for officer training school, uh, Air Force officer training school. Uh, went through, did all the application processes, got the reference letters done, um, did all that, physicals, and sent my packet away. And, um, you know, you wait two, three months for a response, you get a, you know, a bunch of full bird colonels and one-star generals sit around a table and they decide who gets to serve and who doesn't. And um, obviously I was able to get to, uh, be able to get, get a job, get another job. Um, and I was accepted in the officer training school um, in January of uh, 2002, so. Okay, and then you became, so you would have come out of OCS as a, a second lieutenant. Second lieutenant. And were you stationed in the area? Um, actually, no, my first duty assignment was in California. Went back out to California, and I was what they what they called a, a space and missile officer at the time, um, where you could do anything from nuclear missiles to uh, flying satellites. Um, luckily for me, a lot of people don't believe me, but my first job was launching rockets. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I launched rockets uh, <laughs> off the California coast, everything from uh, weather satellites to GPS satellites, um, which was, that was probably some of the coolest stuff I've oh, ever I, seen. I can yeah. imagine. I can imagine. We got to cut away, take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Deshaun Vogel. And if you've missed the first 
uh, two segments of this. Shame on you, but you'll be able to watch it on another occasion. But we're going we're gonna to continue talking about it because when we left off this conversation, now you joined the military and you were in the Air Force. Was your wife in the Air Force? She was that in the was Air Force. That was her branch too. Yes, sir. Is she still in? She's still in, yes. Active okay. duty um, ROTC instructor at Kansas State University. Oh, that's awesome. That is nice. Awesome. And so the kids go to school where? In Manhattan. Okay. So I travel in every day, 30 miles, but you know, I, I you know, people are like, well, why do you do that? Because I like what I do. So yeah. I like coming out here and I love this town. Um, trying to get, trying to move us out here, it's tough, but, <laughs> uh, um, but yeah. So kids live in Manhattan, um, I commute in every day, um, but uh, I can't imagine doing anything else, so. So what, what are you doing now? I am working as an elementary school counselor up at Chapman Elementary School here in town. Um, I started uh, this school year, it was my first year here. Um, I'd known, I'd been around because of the coaching and known some of the parents and I um, actually knew the principal, coached his son, middle school basketball. And um, you know, uh, just by my presence around the kids and, and I guess some of the kids thought I was a, a pretty cool guy. Um, um, the parents were like, hey, you know, we'd really like to keep you around um, as long as you can. And, um, and when the opportunity was presented to me, I, I couldn't turn it down. It was something I really, really wanted to do, so. Oh, that's awesome, so you're a school counselor? That's correct. Okay, and now you're still coaching? I am still coaching. In fact, I have a, I have a game tonight, so. Is that right? That's correct. Let's see, this is, uh, who, what is basketball? Middle school basketball, seventh, uh, seventh grade middle school basketball. Yeah, we're, we're playing Abilene tonight. So. Do you find that as a coach, you're, um, who, who do you sort of mimic as a coach? Are you very patient, or are you a yeller, or? Um, you know, I, I, I am, I try to be, uh, I'm not so much a yeller, or, I really not. I, I really try to be cerebral with the kids, um, stand back and, and kind of watch things, and, um, and you know, just sometimes, you know, as, a, as I've been a player and I've been in the heat of the moment, you get excited. Um, but really, uh, my, my philosophy is if, if a coach can't keep his composure, how are the players going to keep their composure? So I really focus on, you know, being calm, talking to the players calmly. Um, but sometimes, you know, things happen, you get excited. But uh, really, I just try to, I guess, if, I, you know, if I'm in picking, it's, it's probably Coach Schneider because, you know, he, you don't see him getting fired up. You know, there, there are moments during the game where something might happen, but you usually kind of see him standing back, trying to take it all in, soak it all in. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess that's what I... I guess I've found over my years that, that that style works best for me if the coach just says, here's what we need to yeah, do. Yeah. Here's what I need from you. And you're right, in the heat of the battle, you can get awfully mad and do something and say something that you wish you hadn't. But uh, ultimately, when the coach talks to you afterwards, you know, the worst, I, the worst thing I think I ever had was when a, when a coach would talk to you like on a one-on-one, -on -one, say, man, I'm really disappointed. I am so disappointed, and that one really hurt. If it's the yeller, it kind of just goes off, you know, it's just right. like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But when it's somebody like that that, uh, that you respect a lot, and that's what you try to do for the year? I do. I really do. I, you know, I try to teach. Um, I think that's important. I think, you know, just my life experiences, um, I have a lot to, to bring to the table. Yeah, you do. And, um, you know, I, I just really try to teach and really want the kids to kind of begin making those type of decisions on their own and, you know, just, just understanding what the difference between right and wrong is and, and what type of, you know, decision. If I make this decision, what are the consequences? If I make this decision, what are the pros? And, and really start to learn and, and, and start getting that themselves. I think that's, that's so important. Um, uh, you know, I think things happen and, and, and people kind of get lost, but, you know, I really just focus on, you know, teaching the kids how to, how to understand themselves, who they are, um, and, you know, being able to, to, to understand, okay, if, I'm, if I go down this road, you know, here's what's going to happen. If I go down this road, here's what's going to happen, so. And, of course, as you mentioned, you have an office up the hill from where we are right now. We're at the Kansas Auto Racing Museum as we filmed this beautiful office that was built right after the tornado yeah. the whole building was built after Very my nice daughter thing. had that Allison Phillips and now she's she's married and she's a she's a mom with a couple ones at home in her own business and things and and I had just a great appreciation for what she went through to become a counselor and then to be a counselor I always like watching uh, the counselors interact with the kids because you see the kids standing clear off over here by himself or herself and uh, you know they want to talk to you. Yeah. And you see the group of three or four that, that want to interact with you. Yeah. And to know and have that ability to know when the timing is right to go over and talk to that little boy or that little girl over there and then be able to see what's going on in their life. Right. You, you obviously have that ability to do it, I can tell. 
uh, I can just tell it about you. I work at it. Um, <laughs> you know, when I first came in, I was I was concerned. Um, I'm like, okay, I'm a I'm a really big guy, and I'm dealing with kindergartners, first graders, second graders. How are they going to respond to me? Um, and you know, I took it upon myself to really kind of go out of my comfort zone with that. And before I knew it, you know, you're getting the hugs and hey, Mr. Fogel, how are you doing today? And and you know, they're running up on you. And and even the kids who who may not be as you know excited, you can walk over and talk. And they, yes, Mr. Fogel, I'm doing okay. And you know, I'm able to get the kids to respond to me, which is important um, in building that trust um, because you want if there is something going on or there's something you know, not positive in their life, you want them to be able to come talk to you. Yeah. Um, that, that's so, so extremely important because you don't want to, to miss something that um, could have, you know, lifelong lasting impact, so. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that's tremendous. You know, I, um, you know, I'm an attorney and I'm a judge. And, and so what I now see in our culture, like when I started being an attorney about 40 years ago, um, if we had to cover the juvenile docket, you know, it was, um, for a few violations, some, some little minor thing. And over the years, and it's probably been for at least 20, maybe 30 years, uh, now it just almost mirrors the adult court of, of possession of meth, of, of marijuana, of, of uh, all of the criminal offenses that can take place. You see the same thing, and they're, and they're just kids. They are just kids. And you just hope that you can make some positive difference somewhere in there uh, to kind of fill the gap for Many times it's their parents, and now I look in the courtroom and I see the grandparents being in there because their parents um, didn't pick up the ball and go with it. You you find that? I, I do. You know, it, it's you know my goal and, and and my responsibilities are to you know to advocate for the students and and you know help them develop that social emotional uh, you know as they get older. Um, you know, sometimes you may have a situation where you're the only male figure in that in that child's life. Um, you know, how do you, you know, how do you manage that, you know, and be able to and still do the still the job. But, you know, sometimes, you know, kids just they just need a hug or, you know, like I said, they just need a male figure in their life. Somebody just to say, hey, you know, Mr. Fogel, I need to bounce this off of you, need your ideas. And and that that part of it, I think, is, is so important, um, you know, just being, you know, maybe that missing piece that they don't have yeah. um, and somebody, a confidant, somebody they can talk to, somebody they can they can trust and rely upon. I think that is so important. Boy, I agree with you. We got to cut away, take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. Uh, Deshaun and I are finishing up this show. I have certainly enjoyed it, oh, Deshaun. Thank, you, thank so you so much. And if you haven't tuned in with this, or even if you have, let me just give you a little recap. Uh, Deshaun, uh, Deshaun, I mean, grew up over, but well, he, he was a military brat, like he said, and the family moved all over the place. Ultimately, why he came to high school at uh, Chapman High School, and it was because of the bus system that Chapman High School had that got him there. That's correct. But uh, he enjoyed the area enough that uh, went on to college at Kansas State, played for Bill Snyder, uh, and then went on into the military, ultimately. Mm -hmm. uh, graduated, of course, from K-State, went to the military, and uh, now you're back, yeah, and back. you got uh, your wife teaches ROTC. She's a major. Yes. And uh, you obtained the rank of uh, major in the military as well. Yes, sir. I asked uh, Deshaun about uh, some of the military things, and he said, "Well, I was it was sensitive duties, and if I told you I'd have to kill you, Doug. Well, I got other shows I got to do, so I <laughs> uh, said so just just keep it." Deshaun, I've really enjoyed visiting with you. Thank you so much. And good luck with the job as a counselor. You've got one of the most important jobs in the world. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. See you next time.